What's up YouTube? So let's have a little fun today and sneak behind the curtain or rather inside a physician's wallet to learn exactly how much they make. Hi, I'm Dr. Josie. This is Write Your Acceptance. Usually we will talk about everything medical and dental school admissions related from personal statements to secondaries to interview prep, but today we're going to have a little fun. So after a bajillion years of schooling, preparation, residencies, rotations, all that good stuff, physicians can make some pretty good coin, but not all special are created equal. Let's find out some details. So today's information is coming from a couple of sources. My main first source is the AAMC's website. The AAMC's 2023 annual report came out and so that's where kind of some of the numbers are coming from. I will link below all of the sources that I basically kind of scoured through. High level, the average physician salary went up from five years ago at 299,000 to 325, possibly due to physician burnout, pandemic, and so kind of physician shortages and kind of the need is on the rise. Some physicians are also looking for shift work and virtual care. Most of these numbers, or I, I believe the survey that these numbers uh, come from are all full-time physicians. PCPs, primary care physicians, are making on average $265,000. And while the average of all specialties, and you'll see kind of how broad that range is, is 382K. So here are the top 10 specialty salaries. Plastics at 619, orthopedics 573, cardio 507, urology 506, and it goes all the way down to dermatology at 443, and then peds at 251 and family medicine at $255,000. A couple of details I wanted to note from the report. There is a slight improvement in gender-based pay. If you look at the numbers um, through a gender-based kind of pay discrepancy, so there is closing of that gap somewhat. There is increased discontent with Medicare and that this survey was conducted with over 10,000 physicians in about 20 different specialties. Now there are some discrepancies with other sources and I wanted to kind of share those a little bit to just kind of cross-reference the information. On this survey, neurosurgeons are the highest paid specialty, averaging salary of 788K. The results were drawn from about 190, 100,000 physicians within a span of six years, about 31,000 being surveyed in just 2022. So according to their surveys, these are the highest paid specialties. We have neurosurgeons, like I mentioned, at 788, thoracic surgeons at 706K, orthopedics at 624, plastic surgeons at 571, vascular surgeons at 557, oral and maxillofacial surgeons at 556, and it goes all the way down. I'll give you the entire list. 19, we have pulmonologists at 400, and nuclear medicine number 20 at 392. The biggest increases were in oncology, gastroenterology, anesthesia, very kind of procedure-based post-pandemic. Are you considering a career in medicine angling for a specific specialty already? If you are, I work with students on all aspects of the medical school admissions, right? From personal statement to interview prep. So if you are interested in learning how I work with students, get on my schedule. The link is in the description, but then also comment below and we can start chatting. So back to our trusted AMC survey and their numbers. Let's kind of go through deep dive a little bit into the gender based and kind of other breakdowns that they have for us. So in primary care, a male physician is averaging 286K, while female is averaging 239K. There is no current data stated for physicians who identify as non-binary or did not choose to identify with a gender. Male physicians earned 19% more, which is the smallest disparity to date, with 25% difference five years ago. For specialists, male physicians are making 415K, female 327K. Male specialists make 27% more than female counterparts. Also, if we look at pay breakdown by race, white physicians are making on average 358K, Asian Americans are making 351K, Hispanic Latinx physicians are making 338K, and African American black uh, physicians are making 311K. So who feels fairly compensated? These numbers are, are pretty interesting to kind of think through. While 65% of a psychiatrist feel fairly compensated, about 35% only in infectious disease feel fairly compensated. If you look down at the lower kind of paying specialties, some of those feel very content and fairly compensated. And that may be not so much just kind of dollar for dollar, 
but smaller practice, less competition with peers. I mean, it could be kind of a couple of different outside factors that we're not looking at when we're just looking at the numbers. So physician shortage, this is an interesting kind of group of data. So on a state level, the states with the greatest estimated physician shortage will be California, Florida, and Texas. And just because I am in Florida, I work with a number of Florida pre-meds and Texas pre-meds, there's definitely kind of great, great competition in these medical schools for sure. But we're seeing at kind of what physician shortages are gonna be looking like in a few years. Something that should be kind of great to hear, a resounding 73% of the physicians surveyed would choose medicine again. So that, you know, you hear kind of sometimes negative aspects of physician burnout, and I imagine it's very, very real, but this is kind of like very kind of heartwarming. So like I said, this was just a fun video to kind of deep dive into or not so deep dive into some numbers so that you got kind of an idea as to compensation and how that kind of changes between specialties. So just kind of, you know, if you were stopping by, hi, hi, I am Dr. Josie. This is Write Your Acceptance. If you are applying to medical school, I work with students on elevating their message, on really standing out in your application so that your white coat dream becomes your reality tomorrow. If you are interested in learning how I work with students, definitely get on my calendar for your free chat or comment below and we can start talking. I'll see you soon. Bye.